Hi kids, this is a deep dive tutorial for Stable Diffusion XL. My Stable Diffusion client is called Draw Things. It's free on the App Store for Mac and iOS. Now a lot of this discussion will involve resolution tricks to create larger images, as well as learning the recommended settings and parameters according to Stability AI. I'll touch on the new Refiner model, which has opened up new workflows for 1.5 models. And lastly, I'll discuss the new aesthetic scale, what it does, and how to apply it to your renders. Now, SDXL target render size is 1024 by 1024, quite a bit larger than Stable Diffusion 1.5. But there's a list of ratios being rumored as some kind of best settings for Excel, but they're really just the resolution options on ClipDrop, Stability AI's Image Generator API, and Web Interface. Now, I'll list those resolutions here since they're not wrong. Uh, and I've added their approximate photography ratios. Now, 1024 by 1024 is, of course, one by one. 1152 by 896 is approximately 32. 1216 by 832 is close to 43. And 1344 by 768 is not quite 169, but near it. Now, the last ratio is a very wide banner 1536 by 640. That's 2.4 to 1. Now these settings aren't magical, they're just the options available through Stability's online API. But notice how all these resolutions straddle 1024, where the width goes higher, the height is reduced, and vice versa. Now staying near 1024 should give you pretty good results, but you're not limited to these resolutions. In fact, according to the SDXL white paper published on Archive. Different image ratios were fine-tuned after it was all trained on 1024 by 1024. So many, many resolutions between 512 and 2048 were fine-tuned into the model, both horizontally and vertically. So you are definitely not restricted to the clip drop resolutions. SDXL was fine-tuned on all these other ratios. Now that doesn't mean that SDXL is free from distortions related to the render frame. So sometimes I see surface materials cropped short in ways that don't make sense for the image. Or I'm sure we've all seen where side walls will squeeze the subject, especially in a square image that probably needed a lot more width. And when I render my interior rooms, they always tend to be, ironically, the exact same width as my image ratio. So I get a lot of 16-9 rooms, which are pretty, pretty wide and large. <laughs> Now, adjusting the resolution can help with these problems, although they will, of course, fundamentally alter the image's original noise sampling pattern, so you won't get exactly the same image. But this adds a new flexibility to how images can be composed. Now, rendering at a higher resolution than 1024 will generate images with denser details and less overall coherency, while resolutions lower than 1024 will generate with less detail, but potentially a composition with a better focus on the subject. Now, this compositional scale is according to the original noise sampling. When duplicate faces and disembodied limbs start appearing, it suggests that the render resolution is too large in one or both directions. Uh, the same subject is generated in multiple locations, and in the later steps, Stable Diffusion starts trying to merge all those, you know, generations into one blob figure, or it ends up just generating identical twins. Now, High Resolution Fix in Draw Things uses this scaling trick to start a render at a lower resolution, just long enough to establish the image's composition. 
It then switches to a higher full resolution to finish the render through automatic image to image. In Draw Things, High Resolution Fix engages automatically when the render resolution exceeds the recommended size, but that's presumed to be 512 by 512 based on Stable Diffusion 1.5. So with Excel's high resolution, the automatic settings are generally too low. They need to be doubled to match Excel's default render size. Now some ratios don't resolve accurately down to lower resolutions. So set the width and height as near as possible to match the ratio of your final render or else it's going to be stretched, you know, a little bit in the horizontal, a little bit in the vertical. Now the second pass strength should be set as low as possible, just enough to eliminate the duplication artifacts that appear at higher resolutions. Find the balance between the cleaner, low resolution composition and the fine details created with the higher resolution second pass. Now let's go back to those official parameters. Now according to the Stability AI documents that's on their API, XL 1.0 uses a step range between 30 and 50. That's lower than the typical 1.5 models. CFG scale, or text guidance as it's called in Draw Things, is also lower with recommended settings between 4 and 14. Now, I'm usually between 4 and 6, so that 14 seems awfully high to me. I recommend that you start dead in the center with 40 steps and maybe 5 or 6 on your text guidance. You should have some wiggle room within this range to affect the image quality without significantly changing the composition. Now, if you lower the CFG settings, you usually get a softer, low contrast render, while the higher settings are going to add contrast and saturation up to a point where the image starts to look a little overcooked. Higher steps might add more details and background objects to the composition, but they can also overbake the image past a certain safe range. Now, SDXL introduces an image to image refiner model that sharpens boundary lines, edges, shadows, and fine details, it should be applied at the tail end of the render. And the XL base can also be used standalone without the refiner. And some users reported that the refiner interferes with their XL LoRa's. I didn't see that. So that may have been a bug in an early release and fixed, but watch out for that. If it's not working, maybe you're mixing in Alora, and you're getting some kind of a conflict. I don't know. Now, I've seen good results starting my refiner around 90 to 95 percent. This means that the refiner model kicks in only for the last 10 to 5 percent or so of the render. If it's engaged too early, it can overwrite the original image with wrong information, or it removes elements entirely. Basically, like bad image to image. The refiner is an image to image model. Now, in my test, the refiner had a big impact on architecture, on shadows, especially the corners and straight lines. It does not have a strong effect on people or organic objects, but maybe it adds some definition there, and I'm just not seeing it. In Draw Things, the refiner can be replaced with other models from the same generation, so that allows two different 1.5 models to be blended into the same render and you can choose where one model cuts off and the other model engages. So because of the interface of the refiner, uh, we get some new life on some old 1.5 models too. Now the last setting introduced in Excel are two parameters that require a little explanation. That's aesthetic score and negative aesthetic score. And these are additional training done on a subset of the Lion database curated for their visual quality, which basically means a bunch of images were rated on a scale from one to 10 on how pretty they are. <laughs> now the resulting neural model 
was trained on human judged aesthetics. So all of these images in that database are arranged by, uh, you know, how aesthetically pretty they are. Now there's more information on the Lion website and what you maybe are interested in is that a good portion of those images, about 40,000, were actually stable diffusion prompts. So this is recursive training, AI on AI, but it's human, there's a human in the loop there making a judgment call. Now all this information I gleaned from the Lion and Stability AI websites. I didn't find a real, you know, like a full paper explaining what this is. It's basically a Lion project that Stable Diffusion or Stability AI is taking advantage of training from. Do further research if you want, but it's enough to understand that this is a specific subset of trained images. It's not a magic wand or some post render filter that fixes faces, although it might might seem like that at first. So applying the aesthetic score to your render adds the potential to feed in associated data from this additional Lion database. So it's going to add elements at the text guidance level. That's like your prompt, your text prompt. The idea is that this uh, aesthetic score can replace prompts like trending masterpiece on ArtStation and, you know, perfect face, perfect body, perfect hair, perfect eyes, sym symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. It's also that string of words uses magic talismans to generate instant masterpieces like a 4K, 8K, HDRI, Octane Render, Super Great Render, you know what I'm talking about, high quality. So they've converted that into a slider. <laughs> Now, the aesthetic score parameter represents a score on this aesthetics rating system. So a score of 8 is a different subset of imagery than images that were scored as a 4. So it's not twice as pretty. It's actually different visual elements that can be prompted for. Now, it's not as simple as just like, you know, you crank up the aesthetic setting and suddenly, uh, you know, Stability Diffusion puts a, puts a Mona Lisa in your image <laughs> to raise the, its aesthetic score. That's not how it works. What it does is it adds in detail, sometimes very subtle, based on your text prompt. Now, here's the catch from my tests. The aesthetic score works like a bell curve with more noticeable effects appearing when the settings are in the middle between like three and eight. The extreme high and the extreme low settings seem to have less to offer. So I think it's likely that, you know, uh, since they were judged, uh, you know, fewer images were ranked a perfect 10 or, you know, an abysmal one. <laughs> basically because of how multiple judges get averaged out across many humans. So there's a bell curve there where both ends are kind of weak and most of the action is in the middle of the parameters. Now the other interesting aspect of this being pure data from a neural network is the negative aesthetic score. And so the opposite of aesthetics isn't no aesthetics, it's negative aesthetics, the negative of that data. So whatever is the opposite of pretty. <laughs> and what I've discovered is that negative aesthetics can enhance wrinkles and skin blemishes. If you're into that sort of thing, I'm sure your waifu will forgive you if you experiment with older ladies. It might add dirt and weathering. In my tests, I saw definite influence in the three to eight range. Again, it feels like a bell curve and the extreme ends seem to fall off to imperceptible levels and couldn't really tell if they were adding anything or not. All right, it should be obvious by now that my renders are not the same as your renders and you should make your own tests on your own content. Hopefully I've helped inform you a little bit about what you're looking at and what you're looking for. So when you start those tests, you're a little bit ahead. Uh, but, you know, you might see very different results if your renders are just, you know, anime and waifus. 
you know, your mileage will vary. As always, look at your images, identify the flaws that you're seeing and decide how they can be better. Don't just copy paste someone else's settings from the internet, not even mine, even though I'm trying to explain how it works so that you can see what you're doing and make informed decisions. All right, kids, I hope you had to learn and I hope you're enjoying Stable Diffusion XL. I certainly am. In fact, it's kind of soaked up my whole week and I need to get back to being productive and working on other things. <laughs> so I just wanted to distill what I've discovered over the past week into a video to get you started on your own, uh, your own experiments. I will talk to you soon, kids. Probably have some new news for you next week. And happy rendering. I'll talk to you later. Bye.